Uh, so um, earlier I released a short video uh, arguing that being an atheist is not sufficient in today's world. It's not intellectually challenging and, you know, um, I do believe that um, there should be something more to that. And, you know, if you think about it, oh, of, okay, uh, so this concept of God as a person who observes and, and rewards us and punishes us, that is naturally outdated. And I have no argument about that. I have no issue about that. But, you know, to be an atheist, uh, that is a kind of a de facto standard uh, position of intellectuals now. And, you know, people subscribe to the idea of an atheism, um, you know, everywhere. Uh, n not so much in Japan, because, you know, in Japan, uh, these things are usually uh, treated, approached uh, in an ambiguous manner. But in Western countries, uh, like in the UK or in the United States, uh, to be an atheist has become... Well, I'm not saying uh, it's fashionable, but uh, it has become, uh, you know, kind of default position that intellectuals would have, and that is understandable because you know, uh, you know, several hundred years since Newton's uh, evolution, revolution, uh, we have we're accustomed to this idea that everything in this universe evolves according to the natural law, you know, everything including our brain and our body, and you know. So whatever we think, uh, it's determined by the natural. There's nothing external to it. Uh, most probably, there is no free will, and free will is just an illusion, as I have been arguing uh, from time to time. So, you know, this very idea of a god uh, who observes and, you know, rewards or punishes us and sends us to heaven or otherwise, uh, sounds like a really outdated idea, and that, I agree with that. Uh, you know, this idea that uh, maybe the, the God created the universe uh, sounds weird, uh, you know, in today's uh, intellectual climate, because, uh, you know, we can describe uh, scientifically the process in which the uh, universe started from a Big Bang, and expanded, and inflation through inflation maybe, and uh, you know, uh, we can actually measure the age of the universe at uh, 13.7 billion years, I think uh, that would be the latest estimate, and you know, in that process, there's nothing external to the universe, I mean, there's no intervention by the God, and so, you know, this idea of a God is uh, really superfluous. I mean, if you apply Occam's razor, uh, you know, we don't need this concept of God to explain what is happening here on Earth and elsewhere. So, you know, I understand that this idea that um, God is uh, relevant, uh, uh, you know, um, is, uh, that it, it does make sense. I mean, you know, this uh, standard position of intellectuals and and also this argument by Richard Dawkins, and who is a really excellent person, I, I believe, and he, uh, this argument uh, by Richard Dawkins that uh, we do not have to uh, resort to religious uh, teachings in order to explain the origin of our morality is wonderful, I think. You know, it's, so Dawkins' argument that morality, uh, the you know, perception of good and evil, is based on biological um, conditions, not so much on the Ten Commandments, for, for example, is a laudable idea. I mean, it's something that uh, is really sensible. So, uh, in terms of explaining, uh, you know, how uh, things pass uh, in this universe, uh, you know, things including uh, our brain and body evolve, and, you know, we do not need uh, the concept of God. We just need to invoke natural law. And, we, in order to explain uh, the you know foundations of our morality or ethics, uh, we do not again need to address uh, the concept of God. Uh, we just need to you know uh, fall back on our evolutionary principles, which was uh, kickstarted by uh, Charles Darwin. Um, you know when when you think about um, the illusion, uh, illusory nature of free will, and the fact that everything including our brain, 
uh, evolve according to the natural law. Maybe we do not have the necessity to consider uh, ethics or you know, morality in the first place because these things are just shorthand for what happens uh, you know, when uh, things evolve according to the natural law. So you know, when we make decisions based on the moral sense or ethics, uh, we are doing so uh, according to the laws of nature and there's nothing external to it. It's not as if uh, there are things external to the natural law, like uh, you know, ethics or morality. Uh, that would, uh, you know, assuming these things would uh, be tantamount to um, accepting the concept of free will, which uh, is really suspect uh, if we take the scientific worldview. So, you know, we do not need to, uh, you know, adapt these concepts of morality and ethics anyway. These are, you know, at best, shorthands for what uh, more uh, complex uh, processes and in order to understand what's happening to our body and the brain, uh, it is a really convenient shorthand to invoke um, the concept of ethics and morality. So in any case, there's no praise for God. Okay, so that is fine. So I, I think, you know, in order to be an intellectual at this time of age, uh, uh, I think it is a very basic uh, requirement, so to speak, to understand these uh, frameworks. Uh, that is uh, that is something that I can understand and I can accept. After all, I, uh, although I am a neuroscientist, uh, you know, bit, and you know, interested in the problem of consciousness, I took my PhD in physics, uh, in the physics department. So you know, I I, I subscribe to the physical physicalist uh, world view. So I understand that. Having said that, um, you know, just saying that you're an atheist and you do not uh, believe in God. Uh, that sounds like a no-brainer for me uh, because, you know, it's intellectually not very challenging and it's um, cliche, uh, I think, because, you know, you make this storeman of a God. Uh, of course, uh, the religion, world's religions are respectable uh, cultural institutions and you know these are the results of past humans to come to an understanding of the condition in which we live and through that process they came up with these concepts of gods and god's creation of the universe and uh, you know the origins of morality and so on these would have been the foremost of intellectual endeavors at these times, and so we should respect these historical facts. Uh, but, you know, seen from this uh, modern and contemporary context, uh, I understand that uh, people can say that, well, so these concepts of gods are outdated. I can understand that. But that is not to say, that is not to say that the status quo of worldview, I mean, Weltanschauung, that we have, is sufficient and is the final one. Uh, I, 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 we should not be, you know, a victim of a hubris, uh, you know, of this kind, because you never know. I mean, for, for example, uh, Albert Einstein admitted that he doesn't understand how time passes. I, I mean, you can describe uh, the physical processes in terms of, uh, you know, Feynman diagrams, if you like. I mean, so, you know, these, you know, uh, patterns within the space uh, time. Uh, complex and you know so everything in the universe the whole history of the universe uh, is set out for you and uh, there's nothing external to it and this passage of time or this feeling of the spacious moment this these are illusions uh, from physicalist point of view but that is not to say that uh, there's ex ex there are nothing external to the physicalist world view I mean this enigma of time, uh, the fact that time passes and the fact that we are here and this would be the past quite soon and we can imagine the future which would be uh, now quite soon. These uh, natures of the passage of time is really enigmatic and nobody has actually succeeded in explaining these things and of course consciousness and qualia. I mean these are, you know, outriers to the physicalist worldview, and people like Daniel Dennett might argue uh, 
on and on and on about the you know um, fallacy of David Chalmers, for example. But you know, at the end of the day, it is probably Daniel Dennett who is on the wrong side. I mean, probably he doesn't have the metacognition of Claudia. That's why he can keep arguing on and on in this fashionable nonsense way. Uh, so. So these, there are these enigmas and these, these open questions. So just saying that you have uh, this position where you negate the concept of God is not really intellectually challenging and it's not really, um, you know, sufficient. And, you know, just saying that you are an atheist, uh, you subscribe to the atheist worldview, is a no-brainer uh, in today's world, I believe. So we need to go forward. And But I'm not saying that we should go back to the good old days where we subscribe to a particular religion. Um, if, of course, you are free to do so. Uh, but, you know, as an intellectual endeavor, maybe we should, you know, seek alternative ways. And um, nobody knows the answer yet. So I don't know how to you know, name this uh, particular position. Uh, you know, you're not an atheist. and You are an atheist in the sense that you do not subscribe to the traditional concept of God. That is fine. But, you know, you are something else. And you are open to new possibilities and alternative ideas. And uh, uh, most importantly, you are aware that something is still amiss and you actually don't know the final answer, if there is a final answer, and I, I, I don't know how to name this thing. It's not agnostic uh, worldview, um, it's something else, and we do not have a name for that yet. But I be do believe that uh, this is a very important uh, position, and uh, I actually am a personal subscriber to this particular idea, that there is something yet to be discovered, and you d might not call it God or uh, something, but this sheer, you know, uh, enigma of the reality, uh, the fact that the universe exists and the fact that the time exists, is something to be intellectually challenged. And just saying an atheist is an, you know, uh, is a dad. I mean, it's a, it's a no-brainer, and you should not really be satisfied with that status.